Okay. Uh, this will hopefully be short because I'm tired. <laughs> All right, so a uh, couple things. Before I even get to the audition itself, when you're learning, or at least when I learn a list, I need to make sure that I can play every excerpt at least 10 times in a row without error. That means no note mistakes, no rushing or dragging, and no missing any details that are in the piece, like dynamics, articulations, um, color things, anything that has to do with the uh, performance of the pieces, I need to make sure they are all t in top shape and I can do them 10 times in a row. Um, and when I'm preparing these excerpts, I am not just thinking about execution, but I'm thinking about approach as far as physical approach, like because as a percussionist, I have to go to different instruments, so I'm wondering, okay, how do I approach the glockenspiel? What's the character of the piece? What's the sound that I need? The dynamic level, the malice I'm going to use, um, the physical approach, so what's my touch, and how do I get into a, a physical state that I can make sure that touch is available to me before I get there, or on the way there? So these things I'm figuring out as I'm working on the list. So for example, um, if I can put this down a little bit. So you can see the xylophone, you can't see the can't see the Glock really. But let's say let's say I get a list and um, poor Guillaume Bess is on the xylophone list. So first things first. I get my mallet bag. Uh, I have the Freer mallet bag, so there are pockets that you can take out and put individual uh, like sets of mallets in. So let's say Porgy and Bess is in that round, so I take out my mallet, my xylophone mallets that I have to choose from, um, and then I'm like, okay, generally I use Malatech Browns for Porgy and Bess, so that's my number one, so that'll go into the audition round bag. Um, if I notice that there's something weird or like if the hall is going to be too wet, I might use more articulate mallets or if it's too dry, I'll use more uh, mellow mallets. So I have my standard mallet bag for the audition round and then I'll have a backup bag. So in case the hall is too wet, I'll use a different pair of mallets, which are these purple ones that I would use. So I would do the, I would put my purple mallets in the backup bag. Cool. Um, next one could be Schumann 3. We do the same thing. Schumann 3, I usually use um, Chris Lamb Blues. So that'll be in my standard bag, ready to go. Um, and a second option that I usually go towards is the Chris Lamb uh, per pink or purple or red or whatever color this is. <laughs> and that'll go in the backup. Cool. So I usually have a standard and a backup, and that's it. Uh, Glockenspiel, let's say Pines of Rome is on there. So I would use the Freer Reds. Um, if I can find the third one, it's in here somewhere. Obviously, I would have this a lot more organized <laughs> well in advance. Whenever I get a list, I reorganize my bag to make sure I know where everything is. Um, and I don't know currently where my third red one is. So I would use black plastic. Um, I have some dragonflies, so I'll put those in. Uh, where's the third one? All the third mallets are like missing. Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically how I go about organizing the bag. I would start with making sure I had all the mallets that I needed. Um, so right now I'm just going to put two in, even though I can't find the third one. Um, and then next, let's say Magic Flute. That's the standard one. So I get my Magic Flute mallets. 
Um, and I just found the third mallet, so there we go. All right. So I'm a Magic Flute mallets. Uh, I think these are Innovative Percussion OS 6s. I really like these. Um, and since I found the third red mallet, I'll put the black plastic as a backup and the red mallets as the first choice. Cool. All right. Um, okay, so that's that's two and two. That that should be a, a decent enough uh, checking point for that. Um, all right, and then snare drum. If I if there's snare drum, I just use. I only use one pair for snare drum, so that's my uh, Freer Generals. That's what I use. Um, all right, and then there, there could be a lot more excerpts, but then I just put these two bags in order of first that I would use and second that I would use and just put them in my mallet bag, ready to go. Uh, yeah, I don't, uh, one of the reasons I really like this bag is that you can just take it with you. Um, you don't have to go set up a pair of mallets on one stand and then set up another pair of mallets on another stand. You can just have all the mallets prepared in advance. Um, and again, when I'm practicing going through rounds, like mock rounds for myself, I'm also practicing moving my bag from place to place, like picking it up and moving it and then grabbing the mallets I need. Okay? So that's something else. Um, and if I have the option, I'll take out the, as I just did, I'll take out the bags that are unnecessary and I'll just uh, leave them either in the, the mock, uh, in the, uh, what do you call it, the warm-up room or, or in my suitcase in the warm-up room so nobody, you know, I don't know. I like being safe, so. <laughs> my mom always said, just make sure no one touches your stuff. You never know. So it's just something I do. Okay. Just move some stuff around to give, give me a little bit more room. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that's before, that's all before I do an actual mock audition. I need to make sure that the logistics are okay. So my sticks are in order. I know where they are. I know which ones I'm going to use in certain situations, um, especially for Glock. If you know. If you know the kind of Glock you're gonna play on, plan what mallets you're gonna use. If you don't know, you need to make sure you have mallets that can play well on wide bar Glocks, uh, normal Glocks like this, um, and then Glocks with very light bars that could bounce really easily. So you need, I usually would have either one, either two pairs prepared or three, okay? I'm just gonna check for one thing in our Mallet box. Let's see if I left it. Okay. Cool. Just check. All right. Now. Okay. So that's all before I play the rap. Um, if I know in advance, like let's say uh, Kiji's first. Um, if I practice the correct way. I'll know exactly what I need to do to get into the physical and mental state to play Kiji. So Kiji soft, that's one, so you need to play, you have to have the technique ready to play soft. So what do you need to do mentally and physically to get into the position and feeling of playing soft, that soft? And then you have to get the tempo, the character, um, and you also need to be aware of how it's being heard in the audience. So you need to keep your ears open and pay attention to the sound you're getting and how it's responding in the hall, okay? So uh, number one, I'll just, I'll bring this over here so you can hear. All right, so number one is physical approach. So Kiji's first. I know I have to play snare drum, so walk up to the snare drum like I would normally in a practice section. Uh, 
people like having things as similar as possible. So if there's a way you can uh, know how to approach your snare drum or your instrument that makes you feel like, okay, I've done this a million times, okay? So my whole thing is I should approach every instrument to the point where I'm just like, okay, I'm just here. Like if I was approaching a snare drum or a snare drum pad. So I approach the glockenspiel like I would approach a snare drum pad, uh, similarly a xylophone. I would approach everything the same way because my technique is all basically the same. Just stay relaxed and let the stick weight guide your motion. So this stick weight will guide all of my motions. And then when I go to glock, I feel the weight of those mallets that guides the motion. Um, so that's the way I play. Um, and depending on how you approach an instrument, you need to figure out what you need to do to get in that state of mind and physical feeling to play the instrument correctly. So if you know when you go from snare drum to glock that your shoulders do something weird or you need to do something um, interest or you need to do something specific to you before you play the instrument, you need to figure out what that specific thing is before you get to it. Um, and then practice walking from one to the other. So what I would do is uh, practice my approach to the snare drum and then play the piece. Like I would, I would just play the first bar. So okay. Then I would be like, okay, I finished snare drum. Now I'm gonna go to Glockenspiel. So I, I say it in my head, okay, snare drum's done, time for Glock. So I put the sticks down, you know, whatever. I, obviously I have my bag, so I'll put, my, put the sticks in my bag, grab my bag, walk up to the Glockenspiel. Now I'm playing Glockenspiel. I say that in my head. <laughs> um, so it, it gets, once you do this enough, once it'll get to the point where you go immediately from snare drum to Glock, all you do, have to do is just see, oh, Glock, okay, I know. Cool. So then I get my sticks for the Glock. Uh, let's say we're doing Magic Flute. So I know Magic Flute is next, so I know I have to be delicate and soft. So as I'm walking from the snare drum, I'm thinking, okay, Magic Flute is next. I need to play soft and delicate. The sticks in my hand will feel very much lighter than the sticks that I just played with. So I have to take that into account. Make sure I'm relaxed hear the piece in my head first, so that's what I do. Da, 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 so I get the tempo. Da, 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 da. Second, I need to, what I do is depending on what I just heard and played, if I need to decrease the tempo for clarity reasons because of the wetness of the hall, or keep it the same, you know, general tempo because the hall can take it. Um, so that's in my head as well. So do I need to take this a little slower to be more clear or can I just play it the normal way? Let's say I had to play it a little slower. Okay, so I just, okay, I'm just gonna play it a little slower for clarity. Cool, so that's all going in my head. And then dynamics. Okay, the dynamic is soft, but can this hall take the dynamic that I usually do? Depending on how I played the uh, snare drum piece, maybe I can't, so I need to play a little louder. So let's say I don't have to do that I can just play soft. Um, cool, so that's all going in my head. And then right before I play, I visualize myself starting. So I visualize myself doing, okay? So I visualize that first. Visualization is really good. Um, just imagining yourself doing something before you do it. It makes you feel like you've already done it for some people. And for others like myself, it gets my body um, engaged with the muscles that I need a little bit more. Um, so I'm not just going in, okay, start, da da da. You know, I kind of feel it already and then go with that feeling, okay? So let me do this one more time. I go play snare drum. I think about the piece, the color, and the sound, and then I just relax for, what I, for whatever I need to play and then I count myself off sometimes, or I just start. Cool. Then I'm like, okay, we did a snare drum, next is block. 
six down. Pick up the two sticks I need. Get into position. Make sure I can feel the sticks and I'm relaxed. Think about the piece. Think about how to move. Color. Okay. Okay, so that's how I start. Um, what I'm thinking about as I'm playing these excerpts is I'm really, and this is just me personally, something that keeps me focused is really paying attention to the movements and always checking, to, checking for tension. Um, if I can feel myself tensing in my lower back, then I will start working towards making sure it's relaxed as I'm playing. If I notice that certain things aren't coming out clearly, then I have to think, okay, what can I do physically that will make it clearer? Maybe more upstroke, a little bit more fullness in my stroke, so I would need to add more weight, so I would do that. Um, and these are things I'm thinking about as I'm playing. Because um, if you're playing and, <laughs> and it's all really soft and muddy, and you make no changes, like, it's not gonna come out clear. So you have to practice making changes in the moment. So practice like playing louder during like random sections, practice playing softer during random sections, practice playing either more full or more articulate um, in, again, random sections of the piece while you're playing, okay? So, um, and then you'll notice some tendencies if you try to play louder, you might try to rush a little bit, so you have to mitigate that. If you try to play softer, you might try to drag, mitigate that. So these are all things you're thinking about as you're playing. And I practice those every single time, well, not every single time, but I practice making changes mid-piece in practice. So it's not just like, okay, I get to the mock audition and now I'm gonna practice making different changes. No, you gotta practice that before you get to the mocks, okay? Um, then phrasing, obviously. Um, yeah, so I'm thinking about that and something uh, I can also think about the piece, making sure I'm just playing with what I hear in my head or I can think about tempo. The thing about just thinking about tempo, though, it just kind of makes it more mechanical to me. It doesn't really emote a char or evoke a character, really. So that's what I do. Um, yeah. Uh, da -da -da -da. Yeah, so... So we just play Glock, next is xylophone, so I put the six back, xylophone is next. Com almost completely different touch, different fulcrum points and things like that, so I do the same thing. Porgy and Bess is next. Okay, so grab my bag, go to the xylophone, get the sticks I want, and I'm like, okay, Porgy and Bess. Tempo. And again, I'm thinking, How's the clarity gonna sound? Do I need to play it a little slower for clarity? Or do I, can, can I play it at the normal tempo that I always do? Um, do I need to change anything about my articulation for this particular xylophone? Things like that. So I, look, I get to the xylophone, I'm like, okay, xylophone, my motions have to be this way, the color is gonna be this way, the weight is gonna be this way, I'm relaxed, feel the weight of the sticks, think about the piece, Imagine myself playing the first bar and then playing into that. Cool. And then I just go. Um, when you're practicing these individual pieces, it's good to practice, uh, there's things like adversity training where you intentionally try to distract yourself. And this is good because as you're playing, you'll get random things that you don't wanna be thinking about. Like, okay, this note is really hard to reach. Or like, okay, I need to make sure I play perfect. Or, you know, things that aren't helpful. <laughs> so like, thinking about just, just phrase, just phrase. Or just thinking about the piece 
uh, or singing it in your head while you're playing. I love doing that. So I'm singing deca, 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 in my head as I'm playing. And that keeps you in the moment because you're never going to have a chance, unless there's a rest or something, you're never going to have a chance to think about anything other than the notes that you're playing. Um, so I love doing that. I really, I do, I sing all the notes in my head while I'm playing. Um, so that, that helps me stay focused throughout the entire excerpt without having unnecessary thoughts come in. There are other techniques you can do. Uh, I recommend reading uh, and uh, watching, I don't know if he has any vlogs, but uh, The Bulletproof Musician. Uh, there's a lot of blog, free blogs that he has talking about other ways of staying focused during performance and getting to your peak performance, that's what they call it. Um, so those are really helpful. And adversity training, um, I think he might talk about that a little bit in one of the blogs. Um, and again, you need to just, uh, like for me, one of my adversity training thing, I really hate uh, horror movies, so I would play Kiji while watching a horror movie. Um, and I would have to figure out, okay, what do I need to do to distract myself from what I'm watching while still watching it? So I'm watching like The Nun or something and seeing all these scary things happen, but like, what do I need to do mentally and physically to stay relaxed and not care that there's a ghost up there, you know? Um, so yeah, that's what I do. Um, and doing a lot of mock auditions, making sure you've um, done these routines, both by yourself and with someone watching. Um, and then on my website as well, uh, under the studio uh, page, you'll see all the mentalities and mantras that I use for preparing and going through auditions, as well as my standards of uh, pre uh, preparation for the audition as well. So those are available on the website uh, if you want more detail. Okay, so that's basically what I do during the audition um, itself. So I, you know, I, got, I get the list, I prepare my bag for the list, I run through what pieces are on the list for the first, second, or third round, make sure I'm confident and uh, knowledgeable of what each piece needs, character-wise, tempo-wise, and, and sound concept-wise, make sure I can get into the states of physicality and mentality that I need for each piece, as well as going between instruments and yeah, just allowing myself to go through that process and not second guess it, okay? That's the other thing. Once you have a process that works for you at every instrument and transitions between, don't question it, it works, do it, okay? So once you find it and solidify it, trust it, okay? So mine is, as I said, go to every instrument with the approach, the physical approach, the mental approach, and the musical character approach, and then make sure I can feel everything, that I'm relaxed, and then I just go into the piece with my mental, my mental image or my audio image, or sound, <laughs> okay? And then I finish an instrument, I say, okay, Glock is next, just go to the Glock, do the same thing, play, done. Okay, xylophone's next, go to the xylophone, get the physical and mental state ready, play. And I just do that. And for a percussionist, uh, I would suggest going back and forth playing an excerpt on snare drum, excerpt on tambourine, uh, excerpt on tambourine, excerpt on xylophone, excerpt on glock, excerpt on snare drum, and just practice going between random instruments. The more random you can make it and the more comfortable you can make it, uh, or any that you can feel going between any instrument when it's asked, the easier it'll get when you're actually like doing it, okay? And you just have to do that a lot until you feel comfortable. Um, and I guess one of the benefits of having this particular technique that I develop and have been, have been taught and teach is that the basic stroke approach and um, I guess relaxation of the body is the same for every instrument. There are just subtle differences. So for snare drum, you can allow more rebound to just happen so you don't have to like guide it as much. 
With mallets, I had to guide it a little bit more uh, just because every mallet instrument is a little more testy with articulation, so I have to cushion sound more. And tambourine, similar thing, just with that cushion feeling, it's just a lot of energy, uh, especially in, uh, it's a lot of energy directed to one single point, not just an entire hand. So for the other ones, it's directed to an entire hand. For tambourine, it's directed to a single point for me. Uh, triangle, I treat as glockenspiel, just in a slower, um, like a really very deliberate one single high note glock. <laughs> if I had to play a high note every single time, I had to play a triangle kind of like that. Cymbals is just bigger muscles, but the same concept. So I'm just uh, allowing the cymbal weight to be a part of this general weight, and I just play that way. Um, so all of these instruments stem from the same basis of relaxation and letting weight guide the motion. So that's one of the one things that I really appreciate about what I've been taught and what I teach uh, by Eric Milstein, Mark Demolakis, uh, Doug Waddell, and Patsy Dash, that kind of amalgamation of relaxation teachers. Um, and it makes going between instruments really easy and this makes me a lot more confident that I know what I'm going to be doing. Because uh, if I had to go between snare drum and glockenspiel and I have all these physical changes between both instruments, that makes it more difficult to feel comfortable going from, okay, snare drum, all right. Now for glockenspiel, I need to raise my shoulders and do this weird thing with my feet, and then I have to play this particular way that's almost completely different <laughs> than the snare drum. So I try to keep everything as similar as possible, and that helped make these transitions easier. Cool? That's a long-winded answer to that. <laughs> um, yeah, so that, that was a short round, um, and maybe it sounds a little too trivial or too simple, uh, but I'll, I'll just run it again one more time. So, okay. Um, so I get the list. Oh, I, that's something else I should talk about. Um, when you, so let's see if I can if I can find it. Can't find a chair. I'll just keep standing. Okay, so <laughs> so when you get to the audition, at least what I do, um, things to think about. Obviously, the time of the audition. If it's in an early morning slot, practice mocks in that time slot. Okay. So what you would normally do, you walk in. Uh, they would you know sign in and whatever and they would direct you to a general warm-up room or a meeting room. Uh, sometimes you can play in there, sometimes you can't. So the way I would prepare, I, I prepare really extreme. I assume that I won't have any warm-up time at all. So I assume that I can, I should be able to go into the, walk into the audition, sign in, and go on stage and play. So that's the extreme, okay? So I would try doing that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, normally you get a warm-up room, uh, you'll go into the warm-up, general warm-up room, you can warm up, um, and then they'll direct you to your personal warm-up room, they might have two depending on the instrument, but for percussion they usually have two, at least, maybe. Um, it's like snare drums, xylophone, something, and then the second room is like some more instruments or all the instruments. Um, and then they'll direct you to the stage after that. Now, depending on the orchestra you're going to, they might have like 10 minutes in one warm-up room and 15 in another, or five and 10. So I would play around with those parameters, like find one room and stay in there for 10 minutes, doing whatever you need to do to feel comfortable to play. Um, and that's the other thing, with, with regards to warming up before auditions, I would say whatever your general warm-up is, that will make you feel comfortable playing all the excerpts. Try to get that to a point where if you only had 10 minutes, you could get through a basic warm up. If you had 15 minutes, you could use all of it, but you don't have to. That's the other thing. You don't need to use all the time and be okay with not using all the time. Uh, the last auditions I did, I mostly just played for five minutes and sat and just relaxed. Um, some people can't do that. If they don't have anything to do, they'll just kind of run through their head. But I knew I didn't really need to play, don't play, 
just relax, make sure your body's ready for this, and, you know, go through it in my head. Um, so that's just me, you know, you figure out what works for you the best. So plan to experiment. Maybe play five minutes. Uh, if you think five minutes is fine, then play for five minutes and sit for five, and then play a round. Or sit for five, play for five, play the round. Or some combination. So you got to do some experimentation. There could be many answers to these uh, issues that you may face. So go through and explore until you find something that works for you. Uh, my warm-up is really simple. It takes two minutes now. Uh, I do my full strokes, slow, and then my a little bit of buzz, and then do a couple rolls, uh, maybe some fast passage things. Max, it takes five minutes, and then I just sit. Because as long as my hands are warm, then that's fine. I don't have to keep playing to make sure my hands stay warm. So that's just me personally. Um, and then I go to the mallet room. I just make sure I, the touch is correct. And you know maybe play a couple scales, maybe play soft, loud, fast, slow, and then I'm done. And then I just go through everything in my head for the rest of the time. Um, yeah, so it just depends on what you need. <laughs> so you gotta go through a lot of experimentation, um, try a lot of things out, and just figure it out. Um, once you find it, trust it, and just keep practicing that until it feels like you, like you can do it any time. Okay? So, um, let's see. Um, okay, let, for, okay, so, Again, my whole technique is that all I do is relax and I'm there. So I should be able to go to the snare drum from right here and play Kiji. You have to be able to do that. <laughs> um, yeah. Because <laughs> that, that's no waste of time. All you do is just get into your state and do it. Uh, auditions are more, it, it, it's, it, it can be athletic, but I think it's more of an art to, I, I think of it more of as an art of relaxation and focus. Um, just being able to focus and get into character on a on a dime uh, similar to like acting like if they told if they told an actor like robin williams or something to imitate a cat it wouldn't take him like five minutes okay i'm gonna a cat a cat is like no he just goes instinct cats do this do that <laughs> it's like okay a cat purrs and moves really gracefully and i need to make sure my paws are doing this th no no cat that's all you need Mal. <laughs> um, so that's my standard. Um, same thing with Glock. Glock. I practiced that. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, not a very exciting <laughs> live stream. But, um, yeah, that's, that's the things I think about. Um, and everything else, um, please read those uh, mantras and thought processes that I do for auditions. Because I think, if anything else, it's mostly a mental game that you need to figure out and uh, really dive into to make sure you're mentally prepared for what's going to happen because you will get nervous you will second guess yourself sometimes um, you will be worried about certain things blah 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 you have to be um in expecting things that aren't going to go right like oh when you drive to the audition you might hit traffic you might get there 20 minutes later than you wanted to or 30 minutes earlier than than you wanted to um, bring food that you're supposed to eat. Um, if you drink coffee, like you need to figure out what coffee does to you. Like coffee gives me the jitters, so I don't drink. I don't drink coffee anyway. 
but if I did drink coffee, I would shake like crazy. Um, so I don't. <laughs> um, if you take beta blockers, you need to figure out the timing of when you need to take those uh, to either keep it at the same level or have a certain amount. Like, so there's a lot of logistics um, that I could, I should probably write a blog about the logistics because I went through a lot of logistics like crazy because I wanted to know, I wanted to control everything that I could possibly control so I felt comfortable when stuff didn't go the way I wanted. So if I didn't have time to practice or warm up, I've already practiced not warming up for an audition, so that's fine. If I got there 30 minutes earlier than I wanted to, well, I'll just go take a walk. I'll get there when I wanted to get there. Like, you don't have to stay there. <laughs> um, unless you have a tuber or something and you don't want to lug it around. That's a different story. Um, tubas, like if you're playing tuba and you have to walk around with the tuba on your back, like you have to practice walking around to the different spots um, or the different warm-up rooms. Maybe it's up eight flights of stairs and the elevator doesn't work. Practice that. Um, <laughs> like, you know, you just have to practice or think of anything that could come up, anything at all, and then go for that. Um, yeah. It's a lot to think about, but the more you think about it, the less chances of surprises. So, and if you're that well prepared, if a surprise happens, well, you have so many options to, you have so many other options. So like, oh, it's like they wanted to do five excerpts instead of three. Okay, well, I've, I've already practiced the excerpt, so what, what's another two, <laughs> you know? So you gotta have that kind of mindset and know yourself, like what freaks you out? Does a lot of changes freak you out? So practice having a lot of random changes. Like have someone say one thing for the first uh, warm-up room. Oh, you'll do these three pieces. And the next warm-up room, they're like, oh, we're gonna do these instead. Like, okay, it's fine. Just be, again, read those uh, mentality standards uh, on drummojo.com slash the studio, okay? That's towards the bottom. All right, so. Yeah, if anyone has any questions or comments, uh, put them in the comments below. This is my first YouTube live stream in a while, um, but I thought it'd be easy to just have it put up on YouTube. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, yeah, you gotta practice, at least for us, our rounds can be very long. Um, I think the longest round I had was 45 minutes to an hour. Um, it was a long round because there were a lot of pieces. So for me, I practiced, uh, first rounds are like five to 10 minutes, so I practice around that length. Uh, second round could be 15 to 30, so I practiced those lengths. And then because I had a, I knew that one round could be an hour, I practiced 30, 45 minutes to an hour round of playing, including making changes on the fly, uh, having the proctor or panel ask me to make changes. Like, can you play this softer? Can you play this note um, with more articulation? Can you do this? Can you do that? You know, you gotta just go through all of those options. Um, and I wrote a couple blogs about that. Um, so if you search audition on my website, those blogs will come up. Um, and I'll write a couple more uh, when I have time. Uh, probably next week. Um, yeah. So I hope this helped. I know you can't, you couldn't really see the glockage field specifically, but hopefully hearing me talk about what I think about for each excerpt um, and what I think about as I'm transitioning from each instrument and how I practice that uh, gives you some insight and ideas about what you could do to practice those things. Um, the other things to think about like what I'm thinking about during pieces, um, mostly just making sure I'm staying relaxed, taking stock of what's going on in the body, making sure I'm playing with the character that I want and not just concerning myself with getting right notes and, and thinking about phrasing. Um, and again, staying aware, because the problem, the one caveat with always having a plan as you go in is that you can get stuck 
and not be aware of what's going on in the moment right then. So let's say, I don't know. Let's say there's a dead note on a Glock. That happens sometimes. I think that happened for this audition. No, not this audition. It was a different one. It was the one right before this. There was like a dead note that every time I hit it, it didn't ring. Had I kept going the way that I planned to play, this note was always going to be dead. So first time I hear it, I'm like, oh, that note's dead. I need to play more full there. You know, so I had to stay aware <laughs> and be listening. So I had to play. Like, I had to play like that <laughs> the, the rest of the time. So it, it sounded like. Like. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so. Uh, so when I got to it again, I had to play it more full. It's like, oh, that one's dead. Okay. You know. Cool. Um, and yeah. After all of that, <laughs> um, once you get, so, so once you, this is a lot of logistics. Again, this is a lot of logistics. There's a lot of thinking about what could go wrong and preparing for any situation that you can think of. But what I found, having done all of that work, um, is that I felt more free to do whatever I wanted because I, I knew, I felt so comfortable. Because I was like, there's nothing that they could do that surprises me. So there's no, there's nothing on any instrument, if something's wrong with it, there's nothing that could happen that could surprise me. It would have to be like something super random that I haven't thought of. Um, and with that sense of freedom, I felt more comfortable just doing whatever I wanted. So being comfortable knowing that I need to stay aware and if things happen that I need to change, I can change it. Um, and I just felt super comfortable playing the way I wanted to play. And I think that's the main thing with preparing for auditions is just making sure that you do everything you can to feel comfortable being uncomfortable. Um, and if that means, you know, people do running up and down the stairs to get their heart rate up and shake, like shaking because of the, the physical thing and figuring a way how to like go from that state to relax, like as fast as possible and doing that. Um, I hated doing that because I knew for my body, running and doing that and being scared and doing that, scared and doing that was a lot closer to the feeling that I would get in auditions. Running was not because I have horrible cardio. So, and I knew I wasn't gonna be breathing hard at all during any excerpts. Like my breath stays the same, no matter if I'm scared or, uh, Scared maybe a little bit faster, but not as fast as running. Running, I'm, I'm gonna faint. <laughs> so, so I guess that's a super extreme uh, description and, and uh, example. Um, yeah, you just gotta do all the logistics and practice it like crazy until you feel comfortable. And then, be all, then just trust your process. If you like having a set thing that you do with everything, then go with that. I don't. <laughs> I like feeling like, I don't know, man, this is going to be fun. Uh, I, maybe I'll do this today. You know, I, 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 feel com I feel super confident when I can say that. Like, I don't know, man, this, maybe I'll play Magic Flute this way today. Like, I don't have to be like, Magic Flute has to go like this today. Like, it's just going to be Magic Flute. And that's the way I like to be. Uh, so figure out the way you like to be. If you like having a set plan, Magic Flute sounds like this. If the hall is wet, it's going to be this tempo. If the hall is dry, it's going to be this tempo. And these are the mouths I'm going to use. And blah. You know, if you like having those things set and that makes you feel comfortable, you got to do that. You know, so you have the extreme of super control and just like, I don't know. <laughs> um, and there are people in between that, you know, there's the extremes and then people in between. So... Yeah, preparation is all very subjective and very unique to each person. So the more you practice it and the more options you have and the more options you give yourself, you know, that should help with confidence when you enter into 
the audition itself, okay? So whatever you have to do to get that confidence and that comfort, you have to explore all the options to get there, okay? Um, so yeah, I'll write, I'll probably blog it and write this, the things that I did. It'll probably be a long blog then, but uh, yeah. So yeah, I hope this helped um, at least give you one option of how to go about, you know, transitioning between instruments, things to think about, um, things to think about during and before and when you get there and all that stuff. And yeah, maybe I could, one of these days I'll have to have a, another talk about it uh, just to answer questions as they come. So yeah, but if you have any questions, please comment and I will answer them as, as well as I can, as quickly as I can when I have time. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys soon, hopefully. Bye. Now, how do you turn this off? There we go.